Uh, the house and the property were bought by my great, great, great grandfather, John Carson. His grandson, Carson Bradford, built this particular house with his wife, who's my great grandmother, in 1930. Many generations of the family have grown up with my great grandparents there, spend their summers there, um, fishing, sailing, water skiing, boating. My great grandfather and great grandmother were contacted by a real estate broker, an Ocala real estate broker, um, who had come across this family, apparently a very nice widow named Kate Blackburn and her sons, and they were trying to get away from it all. They apparently offered a lot of money, um, which was a surprising amount of money to my great-grandfather. Uh, he knew the real estate broker. The real estate broker vouched that these seemed to be very nice people, a very gentle woman uh, and her nice sons, and uh, assured them that they would take very good care of the house. They seemed to be affluent um, from the money they had offered. Apparently, my great-grandmother did not want to rent the house. She was very upset. She had a lot of her furniture and things there. And uh, not even sure, I've heard two different stories, not even sure she knew it was rented out. Um, one of the stories I've heard from my grandmother was that she didn't find out until after the gun battle. We have some really good information from a guy named Willie Woodbury, who was hired by the Barkers um, just as a day laborer. The Woodburys lived on the property right next to the Barkers, the main house the Barkers were renting. And what he said was, is he heard the bullets started shooting at about 5, 5.30 in the morning. Uh, bullets came through their house. Uh, they crawled out of the house, he and his wife did. As the shooting from the house subsided, somewhere around four to five hours after it began, the FBI started wondering if the Barkers were alive or whether it was a trap. So they decided to ask him, because they knew that he had the confidence of the Barkers, they asked him to go into the house and see if they were alive or not. So he went into the house, went up the stairs and followed the blood up the stairs, followed it into the uh, blue room in the front, from the front bedrooms. And as he began to open the door, he found the bodies of Maude and Fred. During the first few years after the gun battle, uh, my mother said they would hear moving of furniture, they would hear noises, talking. For years and years, even when I was young, you could hear talking late at night. Back in the mid-1970s, a group of people from Casadega, Florida, uh, contacted a cousin of my mother's and uh, asked to get into the house to do a seance. Well, they were given access to the house. Um, came in and it was a medium by the name of Sybil Leak, who went by the acronym or the, or the nickname White Witch of England. She came in with several other uh, mediums. She was, came to the house blindfolded, said that it was the place of a gangland killing, walked the house and said that it uh, was a special spot for a lot of gangsters, ghosts to hang out, uh, said she saw the spirit of Al Capone there. And uh, they had a seance and they, uh, according to Sybil Leak, during the seance, they, um, they got f the ghost of Fred Barker to move on and sort of freed the house of the ghost of Fred Barker, but were never able to convince Ma Barker to move on. We think the ideal purchaser would be somebody that, could, that has a strong sense of history, um, may use the house for certain entertainment because it should be opened up some to the public. Um, somebody that would preserve the house and would, would get family enjoyment out of Lake Weir and the property and this, these gorgeous trees and oak trees and, and uh, both preserve it and keep it.